So, next we want to do is talking about manipulating uh, observables, and we're going to learn about these things called operators, and we're going to do some time-based stuff. Now, to um, to, to let you know what we're going to be building today is we're going to try and make an application where you as the user will type something, type a number into the console, and then the, the, the console will then spit out the corresponding Fibonacci number back at you. Uh, so that is a simple reactive application that we're going to build, but the actual user input side is, is that last section that's what we're going to be doing where you can type it in and then we can turn that into a reactive stream. So what we want to do is create um, some fake user input uh, to simulate the user typing in. And we're going to learn a little bit about how we can how we can leverage some of our Java's feature to create something that looks like a user typing in numbers to create a reactive stream. So in short, what we want to try and do is make a stream that every so often will spit out a random number. And every so often will be a random time every time as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called uh, fake user input and it's going to have type of observable long it's going to spit out some numbers actually not a long an integer what we're going to do is first let's just say return observable dot just uh, 10, 17, 3, 8. Okay. So there's a bunch of bunch of numbers in our in our reactive stream. And then let's replace this with uh, fake user input. We want to make that a static, sorry. see that now if I run Gradle I'll see 10 17 3 8 printed now that's not I mean those are some random numbers but they're the same every time so what we want to do is actually generate some some random numbers uh, that are actually that are actually random, and we can leverage some RxJava operators to do this. Now, what an operator is is something that transforms one observable into another. That's that's all it does. And if you're familiar with the functional programming paradigms like map or filter, that basically turn a list into another kind of list. This is basically exactly what an RxJava operator does. In fact, they're heavily influenced by those. As you'll see, one of those operators is something called map. Now, what have I just thrown in front of you? Uh, so this is what's called a marble diagram. And this comes straight from the RxJava, uh, the, the ReactiveX website, and helps explain what particular operators do. So on the top, you'll see an input observable. And then on the bottom, you'll see an output observable. And in the middle, you'll see some kind of operator. Now, the operator in this case is map, and it says map circle to diamond. So we'll see we've got a uh, red, yellow, green, et cetera, et cetera, and cir as circles, and then the output observable has those things of the same color that a diamond. So it's basically trying to, it's trying to illustrate that we're preserving some properties of the input, which is the color, while mapping the shape uh, from something, so something to something else. Um, so it's, it's really easy to, to utilize this. You just put a dot map um, after your observable, and then you pass in a function a lambda function. Uh, so what we're going to do is exactly that, but we're going to get random numbers out. Now, I'm going to import java.util.random, and what I'm going to do is call dot map. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, when I create my fake user input, I'm going to make a new random object. And then I'm going to put in a dot map. And then I'm going to map uh, the number to random dot next. 
int. And then random.nextInt has some maximum. I'm going to say the biggest number that they're going to output is 20. Now I've broken, I've, uh, people who are familiar with functional programming know I've broken the rules a little bit here. This thing is not a pure function um, and does not depend on the input whatsoever. So the, the more common use cases for, for map are things where you actually do map something from, some, from something to something else. For example, you might map your, uh, an input string and you might, you might prepend it with something every time or you might take an input string and try and pass it into some kind of object. Um, so for example, say somebody's sending a chat message and they say slash, um, slash command this, you want to turn that slash command this into a, an object of some sort. So you might, you might map that. But in this case, to demonstrate it, we're going to be using an impure function that is different every time with the same inputs, but that's okay. If I run this, we'll now see some other kinds of random of random numbers. And they're different every time, which is exactly what we wanted to achieve. So what we want to do is make a fake user input uh, with the random number using dot map. We don't don't forget to import javautool.random. And if you have some time, check out this other operator filter and see if you can figure out what it does. So um, another aspect that we want to do is make the timing a little bit more random. So currently we've just got a stream of four, four numbers coming out at the same time and that's not what a user is going to do. They're going to do four clicks simultaneously. So we're going to use another observable creation function called observable.intervalRange. Now interval range takes in five parameters and those five are, so first you want to give it a number to start, start off with. So I'm going to say these numbers don't matter, so I'm going to say zero. Then you want a number to count up to 20. Then you want a num uh, some kind of initial delay, which I'm going to say is 500 somethings. Then you want a, uh, a period, so how often you're going to be doing this. And then you need to give a unit. And so I'm going to import uh, java.util. Where is time unit? java.util.concurrent.timeunit. Dot, I'm going to say milliseconds. So, to get a better idea of what uh, interval does, we can fire off to the ReactiveX website and then go to the docs. And then, for example, they've got all the operators in here. And all the stuff that you ever want to know. So there's an interval section and it comes with some marble diagrams and interval says create an observable that emits a sequence of integers spaced by a given time interval. Well, that's exactly what we want. And there's some docs down here for particular bits and pieces. So to reiterate, this is the first uh, number. This is the last number. This is an initial delay. And this is how often uh, you, want, you want to output it. So what's going to happen is for uh, every half second, it's going to output the numbers from 0 to 20, which we're then going to obliterate as we pipe it into a random number. So if I run that, I didn't save my file. Oh, what's happened? Oh, no. Nothing's, nothing's come out. Does anybody know why nothing has come out? Yes, yes, because we're working with asynchronous stuff now and that timer was now run on a separate thread and yeah, basically the whole thing, the main thread exited before we had a time to, to get out of there. So it's really easy to do that, to fix that. We just changed the subscribe to a blocking subscribe, which says rather than continuing going forward, uh, actually stop here. You don't usually need to do this. This isn't something that, that, that's very common because, you, for example, if you're an Android, um, some, some, there will be a main thread somewhere else keeping your application alive. But in this case, this example, we need to do that. Now, if I run it, we get exactly what we want, which is a series of numbers. Sorry, how did you import uh, time use time unit again? It is uh, java.util.concurrent.timeunit.
Yes. Um, if we were using Java 9, which of the features that we were using right now would come from the Java 9 standard library and language features, and which would come from the actual uh, reactive libraries? Yeah, so Java, the question, uh, so the question revolved around where the, what Java provides in, in Java 9 and what ReactiveX provides. And typically, Java will provide the primitives so, and, and, and the interfaces, so the concept of an observable thing. Um, and they, they provide this interface called a flowable, but they don't, they don't give you much to do with it. They have this idea of something that emits a stream of events. And then ReactiveX will extend that, so they'll give you operators, they'll give you powerful methods to create it, um, things to schedule in different threads, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, so Java gives you an interface that a bunch of libraries can interact with, but ReactiveX gives you the power to make it genuinely useful. Is that clear? Cool. Um, What's that? A Java.util class called observable. Yes. Would the Java 9 version be an extension of that, or is that completely different? I, that's, a, that's a completely different thing as far as I'm aware. I don't know the ins and outs, but Java 9 actually provi provides a thing called a flowable. Um, and uh, RxJava does have a flowable. Um, they're slightly different. So if I put in flowable.create, uh, well, flowable.just1, this is a, it's not going to be many errors. Um, but they're, they're subtly different, and it's useful just to think in terms of observables. I'm not actually sure if the Java 9 API does have a concept of it, a strictly of an observable. Um, but I'm willing to be corrected on that. Okay. That's an interesting one. Okay. So we've made our, we've given our, ourselves some, some, some timing and some random numbers, but we want to add some random jitter to uh, the observable. So not, not routinely every 500 milliseconds, but around every 500 milliseconds, the, uh, the fake user will, will input something. So to do this, we want to, we have, we have this thing called a delay. So an observable, there's just like there's an observable.interval range, we can do an observable.delay and that'll give us an observable that will um, wait a while and then output something. But how do we leverage that? Um, so we've got an observable. We can't really put it in this map because that'll just get us an observable of observables. Um, so kind of we need a way to, to flatten an observable of observables into something else. Well, that's where this concat map comes in. And that does exactly that. So. A concat map takes in a stream of things. You give it a function, and that function turns one of those things into a stream of something else. And then what concat map will do is it will concatenate all those streams together. It'll wait for the first one to complete, then do the second one, then do the third one. Um, so you can, so it's just like you'd flatten a, a list of, say, an array of arrays, like a two-dimensional array into a one-dimensional array, you can flatten an, uh, an observable of observables into just an observable of things. Um, sorry, I've used the term flat map here. That's, that's, a, that's a similar uh, uh, operator, but we're looking at a concat map. So as I said before, we can make a delay. We can make a concat map. So we can combine all of these concepts together to say dot concat map, and then we have number to observable dot just and then we'll put our random.next int 20 and then we'll add a delay which is 500 um, random.next int and we'll say maximum 500 time unit dot milliseconds now let's obliterate all those make this a little bit nicer All right, so to reiterate, what we've done is we've created a range of numbers that are emitted every so often. We have then mapped each of those numbers to an observable 
which has a random delay at the start of each one. And it also contains a random number. And then we then flatten those random delays so they all happen one after another. If I quickly run this, what I'll see, I forgot to save again. If I run this, what I'll see is what I described, some inconsistent timing. There's jitter, it's random. So we've achieved what we wanted in pretty few lines of code. And now we've, we've successfully described our random user. So to reiterate, um, what we want to do is we want to make your fake input with observable dot interval range and then using uh, dot delay and dot concat map we want to make the make it more convincing. And finally, I pose a question, what happens if you flat map or switch map? And I would encourage you to do a little bit of, of research on that because uh, concat map comes in a family of uh, operators called, and they're typically called flat map, which all revolve around taking observables of observables and flattening them into, into one continuous stream. So there are, there are three main kinds, concat map, flat map, and switch map and uh, maybe you want to investigate what would happen.